This video is in response to an interesting question that was posed on Twitter by the filmmaker Gage Clift. And he had shared a link to uh, what I believe was his first film or the first one that he released called Vine Avenue uh, from 2018. And this, uh, and what he had done was he released this uh, version of it with like an, with an audio commentary talking about the making of the film. And I'll put that a link to that in the description below. But when he shared this on Twitter, he posed uh, along with with the link. He posed this interesting question, which is, uh, for filmmakers, how do you feel about your early work, looking back on it? You know, um, and you know, and I and I guess this got me thinking about how I look back on my earlier projects and how my views of them change. And I thought, I thought this was a really interesting question, right? So I wanted to get into this in a video where I could kind of ex expand a little bit on it. My, my short answer that I wrote on Twitter in response to this was that I tend to take a, le a less harsh view of my earlier movies when I look back on them uh, after, you know, after a certain period of time and that I always appreciate what I learned from them, even if all I see are the mistakes, right? Even if I just see a lot of mistakes, I at least appreciate what I learned from making those mistakes. But I don't want to sound too negative because, you know, I do sometimes uh, look back and think, well, there's some really, you know, good things here. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of what I did with this one or how that moment turned out or how that shot worked out, you know. So there's, it, it's kind of an interesting experience for me to think about, you know, even talking about earlier films because uh, for me that could, you know, if I, if I take that back to the very earliest projects that I made, I'd have to go all the way back, you know, 28 years or whatever to... Uh, the first movies that I shot as a kid, uh, beginning in 1993. And, you know, with those, I was just using the family camcorder that I finally had and wanting to tell stories with uh, by making films and just kind of teaching myself the very basics of how to how to put a film together. And so I, I tend to have a, um, you know, I went through a period where I, I was really uh, had, a, had a negative view of those earliest projects that I made and didn't even want to look at them. In fact, I was really embarrassed by them. But, you know, after a certain point, you know, I can't feel too too strongly about it. I mean, I, I have to give myself some credit for trying, uh, you know, for, for teaching myself how to use the camera, how to uh, do the basics of, of filmmaking when all I had was a camcorder and the VCRs to record, uh, you know, to edit on. So that was probably, you know, the first experience that I had of looking back at some earlier movies from the vantage point of, you know, a few years later, 10 years later, or whatever, and uh, thinking, you know, thinking differently about them. I, I guess I would also have to say, like, when I tried my hand at making uh, some feature length films beginning in the late 90s, I was about 12 or 13, I guess, when I did the first one. And I think I'd made four in total, roughly, I, I, I think. And the last one that I did, which I started shooting when I was in high school and finished in my, I guess, first year of college, um, you know, that project was a really kind of a chaotic production that dragged on for like four years. And I'll probably, I'm going to actually talk about that in another video. I won't get into all that here, but I'll just say that that was another example where uh, when I was finished, I was really, I think I was just so glad to be done with it that I didn't, have much perspective on how it had turned out and it got a pretty negative reaction from the you know very few people who, who who looked at it and I think then that kind of colored my opinion of it for for quite a while and you know again it was kind of like with the earlier movies I was embarrassed by it I didn't want to look at it or even really think about it but then you know after I don't know how however many years you know I I, I started thinking yeah but you know at least I saw that thing through to completion um, and I definitely recognize a lot of the mistakes, but I learned a lot from those mistakes. It was a great learning experience. And, you know, I, I do think there's so much to be said for learning by doing. And you can read all the books on film production. You can take classes in film school. You can, uh, you know, watch documentaries about how to make films. You can, you can do all of that. And until you really do go through the experience of making a film, no matter how simple it is, even if it's just a micro short movie that you shoot on your phone and, you know, upload to YouTube and, and you know, is done in a day, just even the, the experience of doing something like that will teach you 
so much more because there's just no substitute for the hands-on experience and making mistakes and learning from them. But like I said, it's also about going back and looking at what works. And that is what, uh, that is, like I said, what I kind of came to appreciate looking back on the experience of having made this movie from a few years down the road, uh, that you, you can at least, you know, I have to give myself credit for seeing it through to completion. Uh, there's moments in it that I think work, um, you know, a lot, a lot of things that don't work, but you know, I, I did it and it, it was just one more, uh, one more thing that I can say that I learned from. So again, in that sense, you know, I, I have a, har a less harsh view of it from the distance of time because, uh, because of what I learned from making it. Uh, if, if I learned something from making a movie, then I don't consider it a wasted experience. And I will say that I feel I learned something from making every single one of them. Uh, when I got to, then, you know, I guess I'd also just have to say that when I started making short films again in film school, that it's been long enough now, it's been like 15 years, you know, since I kind of got back into regularly making uh, short films in film school. And I've done about 40 of them since 2006. Uh, that there's enough distance of time now and I've made enough of them that I can, I guess I can have a little perspective now and like looking back at the earliest of those too. And um, I feel better about those films because I think by the time I came to make them, I had more experience under my belt. I had a much clearer idea of what I wanted to do and uh, and how to do it and how to pull it off. So I think when I look at those, like that particular group of films, um, you know, I probably have a more positive feeling about those than I did looking back at um, earlier films that I had made because, you know, it, it, they're, they're getting like closer and closer to being able, you know, it's, it's like what I want to do with them. I have, a, I have a clearer idea of that. And because of that, because they are coming, you know, closer to what, I'm what I'd like to do and what I'm trying to do, I suppose I don't feel quite as, I, I've never felt quite as harsh towards those as I have towards the earlier ones. But, uh, you know, as time goes on, I can still look back and definitely, definitely appreciate, you know, what I would have done differently or where I should have, uh, you know, done this instead of that. And, uh, you know, again, it's always about a learning experience for me. So um, I think my, my point is here in going through all these different little periods of films that I've made is, not, not to like repeat the same point about each one, but I, I guess my, my point is that uh, no matter how long you know you keep making films, I mean, in my case, it's been 28 years, and I suppose this will be true in another 28 years, is that uh, it's always natural to feel dissatisfied at, you know, after a certain point. It's natural to feel dissatisfied with what we've done, to want to do more, to want to do better, to make something more ambitious, uh, something that comes closer to what our, what our original vision for the project was. But that also, perhaps inevitably, that as time goes on, we, we will come to take a more uh, sympathetic view to what we were able to do, whether it's just simply the fact that we were able to pull it off at all, or whether it's something we look back on and think, you know, wow, that actually turned out, you know, really, really well. Um, or, you know, if we look at it and think, boy, I made a lot of mistakes on that, but, you know, at least I learned from it and didn't make those mistakes again, and they led to better things. I think whatever of these reactions we have, it's probably, um, it's, it's natural to kind of go through these different stages of feelings about our earlier movies. Um, one thing that I'll also add is that when I, when I finished a film and, and put it out there, I tend not to look at it again for a while. Like I, I, cause I watch it so much in the editing process and just making sure that, you know, everything is, is right before I put it out, put it out there, just making sure that, uh, and I don't mean that from like a perfectionist standpoint. I'm just talking about, you know, making sure that there aren't any jump cuts that aren't supposed to be there or any uh, jumps in the soundtrack that aren't supposed to be there. You know, just basic quality control. Uh, just just doing that, like forget about even the, the editing process and all of that. Just, just kind of your quality control process before uh, creating the final file that you're going to upload to the, to the web. Uh, you see the film so many times that... It, it, it becomes very hard to distance yourself at all from from it. You know, you know it inside and out. You know every line, every beat, every gesture. Um, so I do find that because of that, you just have to give yourself some time before you go back and look at these things again and, uh, you know, try to 
form too much of an opinion about them. Uh, and one other thing I'll say is I think it's also hard to separate out our initial reaction to the movie. Once it's done, it's hard to separate out our, our initial reaction from the reactions of anybody who sees it. And I think this was especially tricky before, uh, you know, before YouTube came along, before online video came along, because if you were only showing the movie to a few like family and friends, uh, you had a much more limited number of reactions to, to draw on. And so if it was, you know, if you showed it to like three or four people and it was all negative, then that kind of could color your view of how you thought about that movie. But, you know, if you had been, if I like think back to some of my earlier films, if I'd been able to put it online, yeah, maybe the three or four, you know, friends or family I showed it to would have not thought much of it. But then, you know, there could have been a dozen or two dozen people out there who really enjoyed it. Right. So you never really know. Um, you know, I'm not saying to discount the op opinions of anyone who watches your movie, especially people whose opinions you really trust and value and who, you know, who understand what it is you're trying to do. But uh, I guess I would just say it's also important not to get too hung up on those initial reactions because you never know. I mean, sometimes a movie can, you know, uh, we hear about this. Uh, we've heard about this a lot over over the years with even major films that it can take a while for them to really find their audience. And that's the great thing about the web and releasing your movies to YouTube or whatever platform you use is that uh, it gives the film a chance to live. It really puts it out there, allows it to live and gives it a chance to find its audience. And, you know, so even if you finish a film and are feeling kind of down about it and not, not real good about it, you never know. Um, other people might see a lot of uh, things in it that even you didn't see. And it might give you a whole new way of looking at it. So anyway, uh, you know, this is a, a very, this is kind of a, a long answer to a, to the, to the question. But like I said, I thought it was a really interesting question to think about. And obviously it prompted a lot of thoughts for this video. So I want to, uh, again, kind of give a shout out to Gage Clift, uh, check out his video with a, with the commentary on his film, uh, Vine Avenue. And, uh, I'll, I'll kind of repeat, you know, I'd like to sort of repeat that question in this video and see what other filmmakers would have to say is how do you feel about your earlier work? Uh, what are your thoughts on your earlier films? And just, you know, kind of going off of that, how have they ch maybe changed over the years? Or what do you think that you've come to appreciate about your earlier films that you may not have seen at the time? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this. So if you uh, would like, please leave uh, leave those thoughts in the comments below and as always thanks for watching and i will talk to you again soon